Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 release Dogs Don't Wear Pants. It is a foreign film. It's a Finnish film, so it is subtitled. So I know there's some people out there who don't really like subtitles, but I'm going to tell you, you got to get over it, at least for this film, because I, I highly recommend this film. It is an experience, and I'm going to talk about that. No spoilers, though. There will be no spoilers for this. When I'm putting this video up, it um, should be the day it's being put on the, sh the Shutter streaming service. This is a Shutter original, and this is probably the best Shutter related, either Shutter original or Shutter exclusive film that they've ever done. Um, yeah, it's very good. I highly recommend it. I. I'm a fan, and I'll talk about it. Like I said, um, no spoilers, though. Uh, I'm going to talk about some thematic things, but I'm going to talk about it in a non-spoilery way. So when this is posting, should be on Shutter, so you can go ahead and check it out. I highly recommend it. But like I said, you can continue with this review because there will be no spoilers. So this film was directed and written by J.P. Valkyapa. That's the best I can pronounce. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, he did films such as The Visitor and They Have Escaped. He doesn't have a whole lot on IMDb, and obviously I'm not very familiar with it because I don't watch a ton of Finnish films, um, although I have seen a few. Uh, also written by Johanna Lume, uh, who's just done a bunch of short films, is all they're showing on IMDb. Uh, it's been nominated for eight UC Awards, which apparently are the Finnish film industry's kind of top honor. Uh, for those t three of the categories specifically it was nominated for were Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor, um, which I could see why. Um, I mean, obviously, I haven't seen all that many Finnish films that it would be going up against, but even if it was in the United States, I think, yeah, great. Uh, also, was uh, it won Best Picture at Fantastic Fest, as well as Sitges International Film Festival, which those are like known to people outside of those areas. Like that's a internationally, those are internationally known things. So it, it's telling you something. So first off, the film looks amazing. Sorry, my cat's yelling in the background, but the film looks amazing. The directing, the cinematography, it's excellent. There are a lot of super interestingly framed shots. Uh, just very, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, not only is the directing great, is the cinematography great, the shots are cool and really interestingly framed, but there's some really cool lighting that's played with in it as well, and it's just, it's a beautiful film. It looks unbelievable, even though it's also kind of, at times, hard to sit through, in a sense, because there is a lot of discomfort, and there are many, many reasons for the discomfort. It kind of hits a range of emotions and uh, impacts and themes, so... Um, yeah, but from look looks wise, it looks unbelievable, and you you get that like immediately with the film. It sucks you in with that. At least it did for me. The music early on has notes that are oddly spaced out, and they're kind of illogical note choices. So that's kind of a smart way of indicating to you for the film that there's something not right, like something's wrong, something's going awry or will go awry with it. And I just always feel like musically when you signal that early on, it's kind of a cool way to kind of subliminally get it into the viewer's heads that like things may look normal or we're starting kind of like neutral or peaceful, but just know that it's not all good. There's something under the surface here. And I like that. Uh, there's a scene within the first 10 minutes that seems odd and actually kind of funny at the same time, but they stick with it long enough that if you really think about it and you think about why the character is doing what they're doing and their motivations and, and what all is involved with it, it actually becomes kind of sad and you can kind of connect with what's going on in a very weird way, a very weird way, but... You'll know what I mean when you see it, or if you're watching this and you've already seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about, kind of. Or if you're not 100% sure, in the comments, we can talk about it. So I'll let people know. Spoilers in the comments, fine, but just know that, people. will Spoilers in the comments. Um, there's great use of lighting in this. Like I said, there's really good lighting, but not just like... There's great use of regular lighting, but there's great use of colored lighting. And it makes the film even more aesthetically pleasing, like I was saying. I really love that type of stuff. It kind of always makes me think back to, like, Dario Argento, how he used to play with uh, lighting so much and different colors. And it just made me think about that a little bit. So it's cool. 
Uh, there's a lot of sexuality in this film, just know that. Uh, so you have to be very open, and that's sexuality in many, many forms. So if you're a missionary-only type person, this film may be very uncomfortable for you from a sexuality standpoint. Um, you have to be open. You have to be able to sit there and just experience the film and let yourself not kind of throw up mental roadblocks is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, yeah, so you just kind of have to let the film play, let yourself experience what is going on in it. Trust me, it's worth it. It's a journey. The main roles are demanding in this film, very demanding in this film. There are two main characters, really. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> two main characters. Well, maybe that was the sexuality thing I was coming through. Uh, there are two main characters in this. Um, Pekka Strang was the main male character in this. And Krista Kosinen was the main female character in this. They did unbelievable jobs. Those roles were so, so, so demanding on a bunch of levels. And they killed it. They delivered amazingly they they were great they were great 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 loved it so there's a key focus on water in this film which i found very very interesting and that actually adds a lot of beauty to the film uh especially when it comes to water related uh camera shots uh i just really really like when water's used properly in this i know there was um was it the movie Tenebre by Dario Argento? Here, talking about Argento again. Uh, Tenebre by, by Dario Argento focused a bunch on water. That was kind of a running theme. And it's the same with this film. And for me, the sound of water in film is, is a very interesting kind of soothing thing that can be played with interestingly. And they do that with this film. But also, yeah, like, like shots within water always look more beautiful than on land, and that is used a bunch in this film, which I really like. That just kind of adds to that being so aesthetically pleasing. The film maintains a certain level of discomfort, which partially comes from the scenes that stay with uncomfortable material long enough to immerse you in the intended cinematic impact. There are plenty of times I, felt I found myself feeling uncomfortable because I was very immersed in the film. And it's interesting because a lot of the times I'll kind of harp on if a scene goes too long, and I could, I could see someone saying that about some of the scenes in this film, but there's a purpose, and for me it worked. Like, having those scenes stretch out so long helps you go through a range of understanding and a range of emotion in seeing what's really going on. Not just in the physical acts of the scene, but in the uh, character motivations and also kind of what's going on in their heads and all the emotional and and um, intellectual things that they're kind of going through as well. So I think it really worked. There's no music during the more intense moments of this, which is perfect. If you've watched enough of my review videos, you know I am a big, big, big fan of using silence in very appropriate situations, and this does it. I love when people do that because it's not telling the audience how to feel. It's giving them freedom to just take everything in, experience it, filter it through your own brain and your own experiences and emotions and, and all that, and, you know, formulate how you feel about it. Formulate how does this make me feel without having any musical cue that that's what they do. That's what scores do. They tell you how you're supposed to feel. And so it's wonderful when they have those silent moments that are like handing it right back over to you and saying, hey, Run with it. Filter this through your own brain and figure out how this makes you feel. I love it. The filmmaker uses that typical smartphone alarm tone, which I know everyone's familiar with. When you hear it in the film, you know what I'm talking about, which is so relatable and it is repeated enough to make you understand that the intent of it is a dreaded callback to the mundane, stressful, everyday life that we all experience. Well, maybe not all of us, but most of us experience, at least to some degree. And it's a very relatable thing by using that one very recognizable alarm tone. It worked really well for me, at least, because they used it a few times and it became very clear that that's how they were using it as a way to, like, pull you into, oh, here we go, you know, going to work, going back to my normal mundane life. I have all these responsibilities to do. Like, it's synonymous with that for me because... That's the, the tone I have for my alarm in the morning when I have to get up and go to work. I mean, that's the first thing that I experience in a day. And it it indicates to me 
that I know exactly what's coming in the day. Like I have all these tasks to do at work. I'm responsible for all those things. And there's a certain level of like stress and dread that kind of comes with that. And I think it moves into the film quite well. There's a cringy scene in this that some people could see is actually kind of funny. And it is like in a sense. And when I was watching it, I kind of thought in my head, nope, this is not what you do on a first date, buddy. And you'll know what I'm talking about. It's that doesn't spoil anything. It's um, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's definitely so cringy, and you're just like, mm. you know those moments in films where you're just like, you see someone going down a path, and you're like, don't do that. That you're gonna make me uncomfortable. Or you're doing terrible things to yourself uh, socially. And um, yeah, uh, a great example would be if you've ever seen the film Swingers with Vince Vaughn and John Favreau. Uh, the, the time where he keeps calling the woman and leaving all those voice messages and you're just like, oh no, just uh, please, please do not. Uh, so that's all I want to say about like the actual film, but now I want to talk about themes a little bit. Um, the film shows the distance that can happen between family members when there's a trauma and each person is dealing with it on their own on their own and in their own way. It kind of shows separation and showing that when people go through, even if it's a shared trauma or a shared awful thing in their lives, uh, they may be dealing with it individually, which kind of separates them relationship-wise. And, and I like how it touches on that. There's a point in this that everyone needs to deal with grief and trauma, and that won't look the same for everyone. That's another thing. It kind of builds off what I just said. Um, yeah, it's not going to look the same, and that's okay. Like, everyone goes through things in a different way, and you kind of have to figure out What's your best way personally to deal with grief, to deal with trauma? Uh, it also speaks to a personal need for release from the structure and responsibilities of everyday life and the stresses that go along with it. Now, this goes back to that, you know, that alarm tone. It, it pulls you into the stresses, the responsibilities, the mundane, all that stuff. And you need to figure out on a personal level how to pull yourself out of that, how to do something for you, how to feel like you're enjoying life, how to feel like you're being yourself. And this film does a good job of kind of pointing that out. And finally, finally, it makes a statement that there are things in life that change you internally and how will you choose to react to that? Will you make the life changes you need to adapt and be happy or will you be too afraid to deviate from what you've always known and sought comfort in? It's the moment of recognizing how you as a person have changed because of whatever events have happened. You're different now, and are you going to make the choice to actually figure out what adaptations you need to make or what changes you need to make in your life to then be happy from that point forward versus just reverting back to what you've always known and kind of being a little bit cowardly about living your life. And it's strong. It's a strong theme in this, and that's kind of, you know, it's a great, great thing with it. And then the last thing I have written down is this this film took me for a real ride, which doesn't happen often. I felt a lot of things watching this film. I was very immersed in it. Uh, there was a lot of tense moments. There was a lot of discomfort at times. And like I said, I felt a range of emotions. I was, It was a ride, and that does not happen. I watch so many horror movies and so many movies in general that a lot of them I just watch as a spectator, and they don't really pull me in. Um, I kind of look at them from the outside, but I felt like it kind of really sucked me in on this one, which means it was a great film, and it did it with a lot of things. You know, the visuals also being a big thing with it. It just looked great. Story was great. All of it was really good. Um, I thought it was great, but I, I also don't know if I would be able to watch it again because it does put you through a lot. The other thing is the impact is mainly in the first watch. So if you are going to watch it, Enjoy that first watch of it. You're going to feel the most. You're going to get the most out of it on that first watch. Any subsequent watch, you might pick up other things that you kind of didn't notice before. Or maybe it makes you feel the same or experience the same. I don't know. But I feel like for me personally, a second watch, yeah, I may pick up on some other stuff in there. But I don't think it's going to impact me the same way. So for that reason, I'm not sure I would watch it again. But it was outstanding. So... That brings me to the ratings on this. Um, so out of five stars with half stars in play, I, I got to give it a five star. Um, I don't do this often. I've only given one other five star in all my reviews I've done on this channel, and that was for the film Assassination Nation. So if you haven't seen that one, definitely see it. But definitely see Dogs Don't Wear Pants. 
If you have a hard time with subtitles, it's not that big of a deal. It's in Finnish and the dialogue is delivered relatively slowly. So you have plenty of time to read. And um, yeah, it's, it's great. I, yeah, five stars. You have got to see this. So I wanted to send out a big thank you to Shudder, uh, specifically Sean Redlitz at Shudder for sending me the screener for this. I love that you guys are sending me screeners. I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, and I'm great that I can kind of tell everyone how awesome Shudder is and see Dogs Don't Wear Pants. It's a weird title, but it'll make sense. And it's a great film, great film. You're missing out if you don't see it. So thanks everyone for checking out this uh, movie review video. Please help me out by hitting that um, that subscribe. That's the way you can kind of help motivate me to keep going. That's your way of saying thank you because I don't make money on this or anything. If you've already subscribed, just hit the like button so you, I know you're still watching. And then put some comments down there if you've seen this film or if you're about to and you're excited or not excited or whatever. You know, people are going to have differing opinions and I'm always interested in hearing that. So any comments down there. But thanks everyone for checking this out and until next time, keep it brutal.